Some of you will recognize the quote by Charles Dickens that begins our words for reflection. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epic of belief. It was the epic of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. And it was the winter of despair. Although there are different issues today than the time that Charles Dickens was referencing in this quote, we are also in a time of distinct differences. Too many people are suffering from the lack of necessities. At the same time, there are those who work tirelessly to treat illness, provide food to the food insecure, and to find safe, affordable housing for those in need. At this time, with so much knowledge at our fingertips, Many people choose to ignore science and believe that all of our problems will vanish overnight. With our knowledge of history being expanded to include those who've been marginalized, there are those who are still choose to cling to unfounded ideas of the past. Racial tensions are high because of injustice, but there are also those who are making their voices heard to make our country whole. Our fifth principle calls us to the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and in society at large. In a few short weeks, we have the right to fulfill our democratic responsibility to choose those who will lead us in small ways and large ways. What will your conscience demand of you on November 3rd? Recently, I've noticed a lot of people talking about the concept of doom scrolling. I'm not sure if this is a new term or if it just feels extra present right now, given the state of our world. But I do know that it keeps coming up. Now, in case you haven't heard this term before, it refers to the act of getting sucked in on social media or the news and scrolling endlessly on your smartphone through the terrible news of the day or the dire predictions for our future or one of the various types of commentary about one or the other of those things. While this term comes from this act's embodiment on a smartphone, I think there are all kinds of ways that doom scrolling can manifest. For you, it may be listening endlessly to talk radio. Do we have any of those people with us? Even if there is nothing new for, for them to say. Or maybe it's letting the TV play in the background, the TV news play in the background as you go about your morning or evening. No matter how it is that you engage in your particular form of doom scrolling, I'm pretty sure we've all done it. And I think it's become more and more common during this period of social distancing. When we can't gather with others in the way we're used to, what else can we do with our anxiety for the world but seek out connection through the various electronic mediums available to us? There is, after all, a certain catharsis in knowing that you're not the only one who's feeling scared or angry or powerless. I know that my most recent example of doom scrolling came on Friday night with the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I couldn't pull myself away from reading the various tributes or from the expressions of deep anxiety about what this might mean for the future. I wasn't there to learn anything new. There wasn't new news after her death was announced. Was my doom scrolling helpful in soothing my own sadness and anxiety? Probably not. Did it do anything to help our world? Probably not. But I'm not here to judge anyone for doom scrolling. I do plenty of it myself these days. And I think there is value to the point that we are paying attention that we are actually facing the reality of our world. We're recognizing what it is that is broken and not trying to turn away and ignore it. 
hoping that if we just go about our days, the world will fix itself and we can tune back in when there is happier news to report. Ignoring the harm that is happening every day in our world, focusing only on the positive is just as harmful, if not more so, than wallowing in doom and despair. The thing about doom scrolling is that there needs to be a moment when you move from anxiety to action, from despair to determination, from fear to recommitment. There needed to be a moment this weekend, for example, when I stopped scrolling through Facebook and started to actually write this sermon for you. It is that moment, that transition into action that our faith calls us to in these anxious times. As I say each week in our welcome, we Unitarian Universalists believe that what we do in this world matters. Though we cannot guarantee outcomes, we can help shape them. The future is not fully in our control, but neither are we powerless. It is not predetermined. We are not powerless even in the face of despair and anger and fear. As the Reverend Gretchen Haley writes, what our faith asks, asks of us, what our faith imagines for us, is that somehow, right at the moment when our hearts break, we will find our way to see through that heartbreak. We will stay put, not close off, not run away, not hurt back, but keep on being in relationship doing what we can to repair the world and each other. Even as our hearts are breaking, we will do what we can to repair the world and each other. I've been thinking about this a lot in connection with the upcoming election. I know it has come up over and over and over again in my conversations with all of you in check-ins, in breakout groups after the service. I know that so many of you are holding a lot of fear and anxiety about this upcoming election. Even before we were in the midst of a global pandemic, even before the resurgence of Black Lives Matter this summer, even before the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, there was a sense that this election was vitally important that as was shared in the UU The Vote video, our UU values are on the line. We know this, we know this, and yet sometimes it can be hard to act in the face of fear. It can be hard to remember our power when the world seems so hopelessly broken. It can be hard to stop that doom scrolling and remember that what we do in this world matters. When the outcome of the election, the future of our country is so uncertain, how do we move through that fear to find hope? How do we move through our despair into action? One answer to this is to just channel all that fear and anxiety into action, to go all in, to lay it all on the table. I've heard some people talk about how they're doing everything they can to get out the vote for this upcoming election because they don't want to get to November 4th and regret that they didn't do as much as they could. Now, in some ways, this is exactly what we all need to be doing. When our values are on the line, we need to do everything we can, everything in our power to fight for those values. After all, as Issei Barnwell sings in that beautiful song, if we want hope to survive in the world today, then every day we've got to work on. But at the same time, I worry about the resilience of this approach, and I wonder if we can reframe it. The reality of our world is that we cannot know if the actions that we take 
will make a difference in the end. I can't tell you the number of times I've voted for candidates who have lost or showed up for rallies that don't seem to make any kind of impact. If we just channel our anxiety into action, we run the risk of falling right back into despair if the outcome that we are hoping for doesn't come to pass. And no matter what happens in November, the work isn't over. The world we dream of is not just going to magically come to pass if the right person is elected or the right bill is passed or the right person is appointed to the Supreme Court. That's not the world we live in. Each of these are just a part piece of the struggle, the long haul work of building a more just society. And so I wonder what it would be like to see each of the actions we take, not just as a means to an end, but as an end in themselves. How would it change our approach to the work of justice if we could find meaning in the action itself? If, in fact, each action was a part of rebuilding our world, no matter what the immediate outcome may be. The reframing that I would like to offer is to think of each action you take toward world building a world of more justice and more love as an act of recommitment. Each time you vote, each time you send a postcard or make a phone call, each time you have a conversation in which you share what you believe our world should look like, each time you show up for justice, whether it is to a small meeting or a massive rally, you are recommitting yourselves to your values. With every action, no matter how large or small, we are recommitting ourselves to one another, to our interdependence. We are renewing our commitment to love one another, to fight for one another, to show up for one another. As Unitarian Universalists, another way we might talk about this is that each action renews our covenant with one another and our covenant with the world. In many ways, I think that this is what Issei Barnwell is trying, really trying to say in her song, Hope. She does not say that it is success or winning that keeps hope alive, that allows hope to survive. Instead, it is working, marching, praying, singing. It is showing up that keeps hope alive. So in this election season, with our values on the line, I'd like to invite each and every one of you to renew your commitment to our values by taking action, by doing at least one thing to keep hope alive in our world. And don't worry. I have some ideas for you. First, I want you to commit to vote. Whether it be in person or absentee, every vote really does count. And I want you not just to vote, but to make a public statement that you are going to vote. Two of our partner organizations, the Granite State Organizing Project and New Hampshire Interfaith Power and Light are inviting everyone to sign a pledge to vote your values in this upcoming election. And Sherry is gonna put the links to those two pledges in the chat box right now. And what I want you to do, the magic of Zoom, is you can click on those links and you can go sign those pledges right now. I don't even care if you have to ignore me for a couple minutes to do it. Now I know that some of you might be thinking, I don't need to sign a pledge. I always vote. I know I'm going to vote. And I want you to sign on anyway. Think of it as an action to recommit to your values. Let the world know that you will be voting and you're not afraid to declare what the values are that will guide your vote. Second, I want to invite you to join in on the postcard project that we've already mentioned earlier in the service, if you haven't already. 
In previous years, we've done get out the vote door to door canvassing in the French Hill neighborhood right around our church building. While it isn't safe to do that this year, we still want to connect with our neighbors and encourage them to vote by sending handwritten postcards to unregistered and infrequent voters in that neighborhood. We've already got almost 700 postcards distributed to people in the congregation to write and send out. Um, but we're hoping that we're planning to get 300 more addresses to send postcards to this week. So if you want to be a part of the project, you still can. Um, and Sherry is going to put a form, a link to a form in the chat box that you can fill out if you want to be a part of that. Third, I invite you to get involved with phone banking either here in New Hampshire with the Granite State Organizing Project or nationally with UU you, you, The Vote. And Sherry is going to add the links to each of those in the chat box too. If phone banking makes you nervous, like me, I hate the phone, and you need a little help getting ready to phone bank and talk about your values, UU Action New Hampshire is holding an online workshop on speaking justice in the language of our faith on September 29th. It will help you become more comfortable speaking about your passion for justice in ways that are deeply rooted in our Unitarian Universalist values, specifically in preparation for talking to people about voting. So Sherry's going to put one last link in the chat box for that event. Maybe you'll be able to do just one of these things. Maybe you signed that pledge when I told you to go do it. Maybe you'll have the time and energy to do them all and more. Maybe you can take 10 minutes of the time you might have spent doom scrolling and instead take an action to recommit yourself to our Unitarian Universalist values. Whatever you can do between now and November 3rd may or may not be enough to get to the outcome that you are hoping for. But I know that it will be enough to keep hope alive. If we want to survive in this world today, then every day we've got to work on, march on, pray on, sing on, with the faith that what we do in this world matters. So let us make sure that hope survives, even in these anxious times. May it be so.